nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. Uh, so today uh, I'll be talking about exploring the nano world, uh, building nanoscale structures with polymer modeler. As Evan showed, uh, the two for nanohub. Uh, and a little background, a little bit background for myself. Uh, I'm uh, Tong Tong Shen. Uh, you can also call me Taya. I'm currently an Apple employee uh, working for uh, iPhone hardware system modeling and algorithm. Uh, and a little bit a history of myself is actually I'm I was a PhD student for uh, Professor uh, Alejandro Strachan. Uh, uh, which is a steer uh, mem uh, m uh, committee member for NanoHub. And I was invited for, uh, to uh, give a little bit uh, background uh, like webinar for Polymer Modular 2 as um, I was working during PhD um, uh, for, I think, two, uh, two years ago, uh, I graduated. So it's a little bit, um, um, also an introduction of um, combining uh, Apple and also the my research uh, back at Purdue and then a little bit introduction and uh, 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 how to use uh, Polymer Modular 2. So uh, I'm not sure how our audience hearing about uh, the current uh, Apple uh, Vision Pro. Uh, if uh, audience who don't, don't know about this product, uh, I would like to show a little bit about uh, uh, the recent uh, like amazing product that Apple just announced this Monday. Introducing Apple Vision Pro, the era of spatial computing. When you put on Apple Vision Pro, you see your world and everything in it. Your favorite apps live right in front of you, but now they're in your space. This operating system. It's familiar yet groundbreaking. You navigate with your eyes. Simply tap to select. Flick to scroll and use your voice to dictate. It's like magic. Apps have dimension, react to light, and cast shadows. Even though these spatial experiences are happening inside Vision Pro, it looks, sounds, and feels like they are physically there. Foundational to Apple Vision Pro is that you're not isolated from other people. When someone else is in the room, you can see them and they can see you. <laughs> because you're not limited by a display, you can create the perfect in Apple Vision Pro. To make all these digital experiences feel real in your space takes an extraordinary amount of technology. Yet Apple Vision Pro is remarkably compact and beautiful. A single piece of three-dimensionally formed laminated glass acts as a lens through which the cameras and sensors view the world. It flows seamlessly into a lightweight aluminum alloy frame that gently curves to wrap around your face. And we designed a modular system so you can find the right fit. The light seal keeps stray light from your eyes. And a soft frame gently flexes and conforms to your unique features. The headband is 3D knitted to provide cushioning, breathability, and stretch. And a high performance battery reduces weight to a minimum and slips easily into your pocket. Because you wear Apple Vision Pro and your eyes are covered, we engineered a system that uses advanced machine learning to represent you realistically when you're in FaceTime. 
Your persona dynamically reflects your face and hand movements. I'm doing well, thank you. So when you're chatting, people see your eyes, hands, and true expressions. New way to use the apps we love. A powerful way to relive our memories. A profound new way to be together. And a magical way to be immersed in entertainment. The era of spatial computing is here. This is Apple Vision Pro. Okay. A little bit uh, breakdown of the current uh, like end of the Apple product. Uh, it's the Apple Vision Pro, and actually, it made uh, with a lot of like advanced materials, including the light fitted plastic materials, and also there's a uh, amount of like advanced uh, feature for the headband, which used the transfer fabric materials, and uh, going to uh, uh, like they basically have a lot of advanced uh, like uh, materials which support like uh, lightweighted and human uh, like uh, friendly, uh, and also uh, in order to make these materials, there are a lot of like advanced uh, research uh, and goes into this field. Uh, for example, the uh, lightweighted plastic materials usually are made of like high density polyethylene. And uh, this is how and uh, the nanostructure which could support this type of materials. And also for the transfer uh, fabric materials, uh, usually made of like 60% uh, uh, to 70% of polyester. And uh, there, um, um, and here is uh, an example of how their nanostructure looks, looks like. And I have to say that uh, this is just uh, for illustration purpose only, since I'm not uh, directly working for the Apple Vision Pro. And uh, this is also not a real materials breakdown, uh, but this would uh, like, uh, I would like to use this introduction to help people understand that uh, actually uh, most of the advanced technologies will have the advanced materials to support. And a little bit background. What are polymer materials? Um, and actually for polymers, they are uh, quite different than the materials that we learn like metals and also ceramics. Uh, and they're basically combined with repeated uh, small units. But actually for polymers, uh, they are materials uh, made of long repeated chains of molecules. And usually they're um, not composed with um, uh, like uh, limited items. They're usually goes to hundreds of, or, or thousands of uh, atoms, uh, and like small, um, small uh, unit of uh, combined unit of atoms together and form this uh, high, uh, high uh, molecular weight mater uh, materials into their uh, Mo uh, molecules. So uh, for polymer materials, they are usually uh, uh, classified with two categories. First is like thermoplastic uh, polymers. Uh, usually they are uh, like formed with uh, like long chains, and usually becomes uh, soft and and when heated up and get hardened when the materials get cooled down. And there are some of the examples like uh, polyethylene uh, materials uh, and also polychlor uh, polyvinyl chloride, uh, also called PVC, and usually used in cons uh, construction materials. And the other type of materials called thermoset, and usually thermoset materials are irrevocably hardened uh, by curing from a soft solid. And um, it will stay, uh, stay like hardened or uh, no longer be soft even we heat it, we heat it up. Uh, this type of materials usually uh, uh, like the, the use of this type of materials uh, like for fiber reinforced materials and also uh, some of the transfer fabric like headbands in the Apple Vision Pro and also some of the plate uh, like uh, we used uh, in our uh, like dining. Uh, these are type of thermoset materials. And uh, in terms of polymer science uh, investigations, usually uh, our 
uh, actually for polymer materials, uh, it only has a history of a few hundred years, not like metals, and they're existing in the in the nature for a long time. Uh, usually, um, in order to have a better design of polymer materials, uh, we usually have to understand the details of how the structure look like for polymer uh, materials, and also what are the properties corresponding to the different uh, type of structure, and how to make these structures, usually what we call is processing, and uh, these three um, area of uh, investigation are the main role of how polymer science do. And all of this understanding will help us design uh, what uh, um, design the polymer materials and how to enhance uh, the, its corresponding feature in the future. And usually for polymer science investigations, there are two categories. Uh, uh, there are two investigation methods uh, so first, it's like um, in the experimental way, um, we uh, use like uh, a lot of like uh, light neutron scattering uh, to analyze the materials um, and also uh, different type of spectro uh, spectroscopy to understand the materials uh, compositions uh, and also uh, by uh, a learn about the phase transition of the materials um, from, uh, from experimental method. And the other way is to have uh, simulations as um, like where our world into, uh, get into, into the computer, computer world. Uh, we basically leverage the computer capability to go like uh, bottom up uh, to first uh, trying to use uh, establish uh, like models or um, mathematic uh, description of the materials, uh, both in the quantum field or in the uh, classical um, uh, nano nano level, or even in the more uh, like larger larger length scale and time scale uh, to develop this model and trying to understand what the interactions at the very small level, uh, uh, including uh, nanoscale level, to understand their interactions and how the structures get formed and how the uh, materials, uh, how the molecules interactions and resulting in the micro, uh, like, uh, like uh, in a larger scale uh, structure changes. And today, and also for what the polymer modular will be focused is the uh, classical model uh, uh, which is uh, exactly in the atomic level, which is in also in the nanoscale level. So here, uh, during this webinar, I will just briefly go through some of the uh, advanced key studies that uh, I did uh, in my PhD, which empowered by polymer modular. Uh, so just a little bit uh, a link back to what I introduced earlier. Uh, it's the poly lead, lead weighted plastic materials, usually made of high density polyethylene, and goes into the detailed structure. And you can see the molecule chains that are form a different uh, different type of like uh, structures. They have uh, crystallized uh, uh, crystallized region, and also they have this amorphous region and formed into tie. And also some of the, it have the voice uh, inside the structures. And what I did uh, back at the, uh, back at PhD is focused on the polyethylene crystallization studies. Uh, because usually when, um, when polyethylene first get formed, it's actually pretty amorphous. Uh, and with uh, different, at different temperature with different processing, um, we basically have uh, observing the polyethylene chains um, developing into different type of uh, different form of uh, structures. So here is an example that uh, as, uh, as um, polyethylene uh, close to its melting point, uh, for instance, we're at uh, like right above the melting temperature, uh, we're seeing that sometimes um, uh, uh, this is how uh, polymer chains, uh, how polymer grows into the uh, crystalline phase. And details, 
goes into the molecular level, as you can see, different chains are flowing with the like liquid like um like um liquid uh and then goes into the solid phase. And uh, as we can see, that actually chains are uh, coming uh, into this region and form like more ordered, uh, ordered structure as showing up here. And it, uh, also an interesting observation is like, uh, like, like small molecules when goes into long chains, uh, we're seeing that actually the chains will fold it itself and then form uh, this crystalline region. And sometimes this like a folded structure and also chain ends will form uh, into this amorphous region. Also, uh, we have studied that uh, if we are uh, changing uh, the temperature at different uh, processing state, uh, actually the structure will form a little bit different. Uh, as you can see that uh, where uh, at the same uh, materials, uh, Originally, they are like uh, like uh, evenly distributed around this area, but uh, as the temperature goes down, uh, uh, sorry, as the time goes on, and uh, the uh, polymer acetylene has been crystallized, uh, we can see that actually uh, with uh, like higher temperature, uh, the as chain grows, more and more material has been distributed into. Uh, like upper region due to the uh, strengths uh, of the um, like in intrinsic strengths that develop during this crystallization phase. And uh, also the simulation has the capability to uh, have a um, capability to look into the structure itself. Uh, as you can see, like this videos basically uh, has been uh, focused on the primary uh, crystallite site, uh, which uh, we originally have only a small seed of the crystallization and observing it actually grows uh, into a different shape of this uh, molecules. And in order to understand how this, uh, how this uh, crystallic, uh, crystallization grows of this phase uh, uh, like induced the other crystallization, uh, we basically uh, uh, has been mapped this uh, molecules uh, and also induced a crystallization site and analyze its orientation and trying to understand how the growth, how the crystallization um, like forms and uh, uh, how the um, uh, how the crystallized uh, crystallization site formed at its uh, like surrounding region, and therefore understanding the difference uh, the, the effect of the temperature on the crystallization uh, process, and also uh, this is the video basically focused on the small site uh, at here. Uh, as the crystallization growth, as you can imagine, that uh, there are a lot of like liquid uh, flow into this direction, and the liquid, uh, and actually these liquids are uh, actually composed with long chains, and these long chains will, uh, this flow will basically induce the crystallization um, orientation and eventually form a new site of crist uh, crystallites. At, uh, as you can see here, and I'll basically show you a video. Uh, as you can see that uh, this uh, right color basically means this uh, the speed of transition. And uh, as, the, as, the, as the flow liquid flow into this direction, uh, more and more molecules are basically getting aligned at this area then formed into a new crystallization site. And here, uh, we also want to show you an uh, example of how, how induced uh, polymerization as showed as previous slides. Uh, and here, as the originally uh, like uh, flu-induced crystallization site, and as you can see, the uh, as time uh, grows, it uh, the orientation of this one will also change, 
And here is a detailed example of select, how selected chains behave uh, during this process. Okay, I think uh, this is basically the uh, one of the uh, advanced uh, like studies that empower by polymer modeler uh, during my PhD. And actually, this study uh, has been um, uh, published in Physical Review Letters uh, in 2020. And uh, if uh, if anyone like um, science or uh, scientist who wants to learn more about this one. So uh, maybe let me stop sharing and go over some of the uh, polymer uh, polymer modular about the polyethylene structures. And also um, after initial introduction of polymer modular, I will come back and show you how to build this like advanced chains uh, showing up here. Okay, so let me open the polymer modular too. Okay, so this is the two that uh, uh, currently uh, showing up here, and actually uh, just a, a, a walkthrough for how to uh, play around with polymer modular. Uh, actually, there are three type uh, three types that here. One is a structure, the other one is simulation, and then the third uh, will be simulate. Uh, so first, uh, this one will be the part that specify how how to build the structure, and here also some of the instructions of how to uh, how to uh, take a look and explore this tool. So first, uh, there are uh, for the structure options. Uh, basically, uh, there have three options. The first is like build polymer itself, uh, and also use pre-built polymers. And Polymer Modular actually have some of the pre-built polymers, which you can uh, directly download and explore. Um, so first, uh, let me go over the uh, pre-built polymers. And here, uh, we can see that here, uh, there are some uh, options. Uh, first is like, uh, to, so this one will be, uh, I'll be focused on the polyethylene, uh, like illustration. And first, uh, this is a structure of the polyethylene. And as you can see here, uh, we can play around with this, uh, with this uh, view. And uh, as you can see, it's quite different uh, than the simulation uh, polymers that I have, uh, the simulation videos that I have showed previously, uh, because actually these are amorphous. Uh, which is um, in the, uh, how to say, darkened region that labeled in, uh, in my uh, like previous videos. And uh, also here is an example of polyethylene crystals. As you can see, this one is like more ordered and uh, more ordered structures. And you can play around with how the materials looks like and how it uh, how the chain get forms and how different it looks like than amorphous structures. And also, if you want to um, like explore, there are other type of materials uh, which you can uh, play around and leverage uh, this type of uh, structures and also download for your own purpose. So. I think uh, also another uh, uh, another step uh, feature of the polymer modular I would like to uh, go over with the audience is the build polymer um, uh, build polymer feature, and actually uh, there are have different type of um, um, different step of how to build a uh, build a polymer. And first is monomer structure. Uh, if uh, you remember the previously I have introduced, actually polymers are um, uh, composed with uh, small monomers and get it repeat and repeat and form a long chain. 
And here we have some uh, polymer, uh, like monomer structures uh, already existing at this type. And here as an example, I'll focus on the polyethylene. Uh, so here, uh, this is uh, the poly, after selected, uh, it will show up with the backbone uh, items that we want to build. Uh, so polyethylene actually is a, it's the most simplest uh, poly polymer uh, materials. Basically, have the uh, carbon connected to two uh, hydrogen, and then uh, and uh, and another carbon item composed composed with two uh, another two hydrogen, and actually is uh, repeated by this structure. And uh, and also we have the. Uh, additional hydrogen items uh, eventually goes into the end uh, of the structure to connect. Um, also for the uh, monomer arrangement, uh, we only want to have this uh, one repeated unit. And actually polymer modeler have advanced uh, advanced feature to have like uh, different composition of the polymer uh, units. And it has this capability, uh, but I will not showing up at here. In terms of the configurations, how would you like this uh, monomer unit to com connect with each other? Um, there actually have uh, several ways. The first is to come from uh, configurational bias Monte Carlo. Uh, basically, have this uh, polymer. Uh, make sure the polymer chains are formed with uh, uh, like optimized, uh, optimized structure based on the energy, uh, energy uh, distribu uh, like uh, based on the total energy and potential energy of the interactions between the items. Uh, especially when the polymer gets formed into the repeated chains, uh, they basically have a torsion angle, uh, which uh, different uh, angles will corresponding to different energy energy level and this Monte Carlo bias uh, this configuration bias Monte Carlo method will make sure that the chain has been formed um, into this um, optimized torsion angle region and here we also have this option to apply uh, apply this configuration bias Monte Carlo only to the torsions between monomers or applies to all torsions of the monomers also, another step is to uh, specify the simulation cell. And there are basically a polymer module, uh, modular have two ways of specify the simulation cell. Uh, first is to specify the polymer density, and another is to specify the cell dimensions. Uh, and here, um, usually the polymer module, uh, usually for polyethylene, uh, we basically have higher, uh, higher density level. Uh, I think maybe. Maybe we can do a quick uh, poly line density. And usually it's around um, 0 0.9, uh, and basically different density level, uh, different uh, like polyethylene will have different density based on what type of materials it is. So for this, uh, I will just select 0 0.9. And here, uh, this output is basically uh, specify uh, what we want to view. Um, and here, only one gets selected. So we, we can uh, weave the constructed chains. And there are other options. Um, and uh, in, turn, in, in interest of time, I will not go over this ones. And also, the advanced features basically specify what the random seed generation uh, generator uh, you want uh, generator seed you want to use and then uh, we goes into the simulation part and for for our uh, uh, for the webinar here uh, we can just select lamps input files only And here are some of the lamps uh, energy express, expressions uh, drivers and also advanced options. 
for um, for audience who are an expert in LAMPS uh, uh, molecular dynamics simulation too, uh, feel free to explore this area um, um, in like by yourself and uh, also uh, trying to connect with NanoHub community or even reach out to me. And I would like to explain more about uh, like this part, but I think it will be very intuitive for uh, LAMPS professionals. Uh, and then we click simulate. Okay, uh, I think polymer modeler will make uh, the structure ready within like 30 seconds. Also depends on what type of structures you are you you want, and usually uh, for uh, this type of simulation, it will be uh, ready within uh, thirty seconds. As you can see here, is an example of how the polymer chains get built up, and uh, also uh, this is uh, this is like unwrapped. So make sure that you have a view of the polymer chain itself. And in the same time, there are options that you can download the PDB file, uh, which is the uh, format that uh, um, as a standard uh, standard molecular level structure uh, format file, and you can use it uh, to use for other, um, so click save. And maybe I can um, show you the uh, format of this file. Uh, basically, downloads. It has the specifications of uh, the polymer, uh, the the item index, and also its corresponding element, and also the uh, position uh, of each of this element. As you can see, we have built up uh, two uh, two two hundred and fifty two items in this molecule, and uh, it basically have all the Positions, uh, position uh, information in this single file, and also in terms of the, um, if we wrap into the simulation cell, we basically have a density of zero point nine uh, uh, gram per cc, and uh, also uh, it will have an option to download the uh, PDB file uh, for this case, and the only difference between the this format, uh, this file, and this file is the item location. Uh, basically, this one will be the uh, unrupted position, and this will be the rupted position. And you can use this file to uh, further play around um, using either using other visualization too, or uh, run simulations on LAMPS uh, software. And also, Polymer Modular will have this option to provide the input file, LAMPS into input file, for you to use in, in LAMPS to uh, run run it in a simple simulation uh, for uh, around like uh, so. Here, uh, as an example, this is basically LAMPS language. Uh, I would just uh, like specify like this is a fixed simulation cell, so make sure the temperature. Uh, make sure the simulation box will not uh, like uh, shrink or expand. And uh, the uh, simulation temperature specifies as 300 Kelvin, which is round room temperature. Okay, for this, so this one is how to build a polymer uh, structure with uh, like amorphous structure using, um, using uh, Monte Carlo, uh, configuration bias Monte Carlo. And also let me go in back to, to my slides. And another, uh, another, uh, example that I wish to illustrate is how to build like more like a uh, crystallized structure, which is in, in this case, as you can see, the chains are more ordered and, uh, also uh, polymer basically uh, even with the same composition, it basically have different uh, formations uh, with the different torsion chains. Uh, as you can see, for a uh, like uh, example uh, polymer materials, uh, you can see that with different torsion angles, uh, we have different polymer structures, and this also can be enabled uh, in the polymer modular. And uh, I will maybe show you an 
example, using um, maybe let's try another uh, example materials. For instance, uh, maybe we can select poly properly. Uh, in order to for um, for audience to understand what uh, polypropylene is, so this is an example of polyethylene, and polypropylene basically is just a repeated unit with copper connect to another uh, CH three um, or uh, its side uh, at its side. So as an isotactic polymer acylene, uh, we. Uh, same with poly poly um, polyethylene, we build up with like 40, 40 monomer chain, uh, 40 monomers per chain, and also configurations. In this time, uh, we can select the rod like uh, rod like structure. Basically, it's like fixed torsion angles. Uh, actually, there are uh, three. Um, like uh, the, the torsion angles between the uh, between the uh, monomers, they basically have three lowest. Uh, uh, maybe we can take a look of this chart here. So usually torsion angle zero has the highest uh, potential energy, which is uh, not favorable. And uh, usually at around 60, sorry, this seems like my, my mouse is very, it's functioning very, Fluent. I'll just use this one. So usually uh, for torsion angles um, at 60 degree, usually it's a uh, more favorable, uh, favorable configuration for carbon-carbon, uh, for carbon-carbon um, sp3 bound. And uh, so in this case, we're using uh, rod-like chains and with angle of uh, 60 degree, and apply to all torsions in the backbone. And in the simulation cell, maybe in this case, uh, we just specify the cell dimensions as 50 to give more room for a chain to build up. Uh, and also, uh, output and advanced features are not changed. In the simulation side, uh, we just keep everything the same uh, and also select LAMP's input file only. Okay, now uh, let's take a look at the structures. So as you can see, this is like, um, this is the polyethylene, uh, po sorry, polypropylene, um, like crystallize the structures. As you can see, the configuration is like more ordered and uh, we can um, have this uh, capability to use it uh, to build like more uh, like repeated uh, unit cell and to understand its properties. And the same, uh, it has option to download the uh, PDB file format uh, and also uh, play around with this structure. Okay, I think the demo for how to build polymer uh, polymer chains in polymer modular uh, will currently stop here. Uh, and I think I will left like 15 minutes for any Q&A and see if um, I could uh, help answer any questions. Okay, so the first question is what if your system has a density over one, the tool says to select a density below one. Yeah, I think that's a good question. Um, so currently, uh, for polymer modular, we have some, uh, we indeed have some limitations uh, on the densities, uh, and make sure that users are not uh, messed up with the with the configurations. So as you can see here um, in the structure side in the simulation cell, uh, we only allow users to specify density between zero and one. And uh, if users want to build like higher density level, uh, I would suggest to use uh, use density uh, as one and then uh, and then use, uh, if you are familiar with lamps or other uh, simulation tools, uh, just uh, use, uh, uh, just uh, like uh, compress the simulation cell uh, during the uh, and uh, uh, 
uh, during the simulation and make sure the configurations are uh, well like, configured in the space. And the reason why Polymer Modular has been limited this uh, to one is because sometimes user may cr like input like crazy numbers like like uh, ten thousand or something, and it makes the two impossible to build up the chains because like imagine you are building a monomer with a density of like black hole, uh, and there is uh, no result as to this can can return to the users, and the uh, user may have this impression that this two is not usable. Uh, so that's the reason that um, originally the developer has been set the limits to one. I uh, hope it can answer the question. Great. Next question is, what is the magnitude of accuracy to expect from calculating mechanical properties of polymers by simulation? Um, I think that's a, that's a very good question. Uh, I think uh, in terms of chemical uh, properties, uh, and in simulation, I think this is also a top area of investigation uh, because indeed simulation is not reflecting our, like uh, simulation is just a tool for us to reflecting what the polymers may behave, but indeed it is not. And also the simulation is based on humans, uh, like interpret interpretation of their mechanisms. Uh, I think uh, the simulation itself will have reflection of uh, what the chemical properties uh, based on the simulation calculation, but there may be off with real numbers, uh, for instance, uh, because, uh, uh, for instance, the simulation cell may be too perfect uh, because in real real systems, uh, the structures uh, the crystallization, for instance, for polymers, the crystallization are not infinite. And also the structures are not perfect. Uh, but in simulation system uh, with uh, current limitations, we are only can simulate perfect systems. But for instance, uh, in the study I did in PhD, I basically focus on the how the property uh, get changed over, for instance, temperature also over different uh, at different density. And I think the simulation tool will provide a trend of these properties and help people to understand what caused this uh, change and how the interactions uh, using simulation videos and to understand what might be causing this property change uh, will be very valuable. Uh, hope it answers the question. Thank you for that. The next question mm -hmm. is, considering the crystalline PP chain you made, how would you orient multiple chains so that you have a similar cell as the crystalline PE example? Oh, I think this is, um, uh, unfortunately, Polymer Modeler 2 itself could not provide this, uh, provide this capability. And I did uh, dedicate it uh, during PhD uh, to build another two, which could able the structures uh, automatically, um, the polymer chains automatically compact itself and build up the polyethylene chain. But this two has not uh, successfully uh, like launched yet. Uh, I think uh, this is also the, um, but I think uh, if you really want to use it as your, uh, using your research, I, I think I would suggest to first get out the, positions of the polymers. Uh, I think there are some uh, advanced features in uh, both like uh, like lamps and also orbital. Uh, they have this uh, capability to rotate the chain. For instance, the chains that uh, we build in polymer modular maybe have some angles tilted and you can use the, uh, use the features in lamps to rotate the chains to align into the Z axis and then compact uh, and have some calculation about the density and then compact the cell uh, into a perfect simulation cell. I uh, hope it can uh, inspire. Uh, unfortunately, polymer modular uh, at current stage do not have this capability. I think in the future, uh, both like uh, uh, by my effort and also some other, uh, also if you are interested, you can also join our effort to build up uh, how to make a perfect uh, automatically create perfect crystal structure 
of polymer, it will be very valuable. And there is currently no tool build up, building up for it. Yeah, join NanoHub. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. The next question is, can I model polymer with fillers using this modeler? Also, is it possible to model polymer chain scission under an extrinsic effect, say radiation? Hmm, I think that's that's a good question. Um, uh, first, I, I may uh, I may not familiar what is fillers um, since I'm I'm not an expert in this area. Uh, but I think there is, uh, I do learn about how to model polymers chain sedents and their uh, like radiation. Uh, I think polymer modular is just a tool to build polymers, but I've learned that LAS has this capability to, uh, for instance, add uh, like, uh, like radiation in its simulation. Um, uh, like uh, add radi radiation level into the simulation and trying to um, make the um, also the chains will no longer use the uh, like uh, non non reactive uh, force field. It has to be using some uh, reactive force field to allow the chains to be broken. Um, I think uh, lamps will have uh, enormous um, like. Um, 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 how to say features which allow you to do that, but it, it, it is it's still very helpful for polymer modeler to provide you the initial structure to allow this study. Yeah, hope it answers the questions. Great. Next question is, thank you for the presentation. I have two questions. One, I was wondering if the polymer modeler could add ions to a polymer chain. Two, I was wondering if Polymer Modeler could generate NAMD or Gromax files. Thank you. Mm, I think, oh, uh, for maybe I can answer the first question if Polymer could add ions to a um, Polymer chain. Uh, I think this is a very good, uh, very good feature if Polymer Modeler have. Um, uh, the same as the uh, crystalline uh, crystalline structures, as uh, I I said before. Uh, currently, the polymer modeler could not add ions, but I think uh, there are some ways to play around with it. Uh, for instance, uh, in the maybe let me show you. Uh, for instance, this is the building structure, and there has some um, like uh, features like um, polymer like. Uh, if you want to build like new uh, structures, and uh, there are some um, capabilities that, uh, for instance, you can copy and paste uh, what what the, for instance, poly polyethylene uh, uh, monomer monomer items here, and also trying to increase the monomer types. For instance, make it two types, and. Uh, and added, uh, so this is a one uh, DM file, and then add add another items, um, the whatever items and what the position. In, in this case, you can just specify like one number of backbone items, and uh, specify the uh, what item compositions that you have, and uh, use it. Uh, or I think it also has the capability to upload PDF, uh, PDV, and you can use uh, like add to like more monomer types into here, and then number uh, also at here you can just uh, specify like um, what type of pattern you want. For instance, you want uh, repeated. Um, in, for instance, polymer chains only compose with the polymers. And ions, you can just specify only like one or two monomers. But I think, um, yeah, a current, a current UI version, like user interface version of Polymer Modular, it could not specify different, uh, different chain configurations. Uh, but I think uh, for the disclosed uh, Polymer Modular software version, it has, uh, but unfortunately, it currently not able to uh, access in public 
and only like for within our group. Um, I think maybe still lamps will be the good tool for you to like. Uh, I think lamps has a deposit uh, feature, which you can uh, deposit what items you want into the uh, simulation box, and then um, like simulate for your uh, for your uh, like use it for your research. And polymer chains, uh, I don't think LAMPS has a feature to build up a polymer chains like polymer module to. Uh, I think it's still helpful for you to leverage that. And sorry that I may not be aware what is the NAND, uh, ANMD or GORMAX files. Uh, sorry, I, I'm not doing molecular dynamics for about like two years. Uh, I may not be like um, very on top edge of the of the molecular dynamics field, but I think polymer modular currently do not support, and uh, unfortunately, but uh, I think maybe PDB file. There are other platforms you can use PDB file and then transfer to the format that you want. Tong Tong, thank you so much for your presentation today. That was a lot of great information. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Uh, thanks, Tanya. Uh, really, uh, really glad to coming up here and support NanoHub.